Hi friends, this is Daniel Research and welcome to the third part of Cryptocurrency Statistical Arbitrage Tutorial. Last time we discussed very important concept in statistics, stationarity. And now you know how to use augmented Dickey Fuller test and correlogram to tell stationary time series from non-stationary one. Today we continue our journey into statistics and we'll discuss orders of integration and time series cone integration. Orders of integration are widely used in statistical modeling. So firstly let's figure out what is modeling and why do we need that. Look at this XRP chart. This may be of course any other digital asset or security or commodity chart. But anyway, the idea of modeling is to create a function that approximates this chart. Having such model is a huge benefit to algo trader because it allows to forecast future values with certain level of accuracy. There are three major statistical models. Autoregression, moving average and heteroscedastic model. Also you can mix them to create more complex and more accurate models. I will not cover them in this video. Probably someday I'll create an yet another video tutorial dedicated to statistical modeling. But you can learn more about modeling from econometrics books. Today we'll start learning orders of integration from already familiar to you random walk time series. Let me quickly remind you how to create it. You simply toss the coin and in case of heads you make one step up, in case of tails you make one step down. Mathematically this can be presented with the following formula, where xt is a current value, xt minus 1 is a previous value, and omega t is some random noise. You already know that this process is a non-stationary, but also it is integrated of order 1, because current value depends on one predecessor. If we could approximate with this formula real price chart, we could forecast 1, 2 or even 10 or even more steps ahead. Just replace x t minus 1 with previous value and you will receive current value. And you can repeat this exercise as many times as you want. But unfortunately, real price chart re requires more complex models. This random walk model is just a partial case of more general autoregressive model. Here is its formula. As you see, in case of autoregressive model, Current value may depend on 1, 2, 3 or even more processors multiplied by certain coefficients and plus some random noise. Using this formula we can easily generate our random walk time series. Just set alpha 1 coefficient to 1 and the rest of alphas equal to 0. And you will have current value equals to previous value plus zeros and plus some random noise. Now let's look at several examples to learn more about orders of integration in autoregressive model. But probably you already guessed that number of processors that current value depends on defines the order of integration of this time series. Let's look at this random walk chart where alpha 1 equals to 1. But seeing this chart for the first time and not knowing that this is random walk, how can you tell how many orders of integration it has and what are the alphas? To figure out that, we'll use Python stat models library. It has built in autoregression model, where you can provide as input parameter your time series data and as the output you'll get orders of integration and alpha values. Here is the output for random walk time series. As you see, it is integrated of order 1 and alpha value is 0 0.998325, which is very close to 1. Now let's go further and generate more complex autoregressive time series with the second order of integration. Alpha 1 equals to 0. 666 and alpha 2 equals to minus 0.333. Here is the chart. As you see it, it is a bit different from the chart we saw before. 
but if we apply autoregressive model to this chart, we will get following our alpha coefficients. So alpha 1 equals to 0 0.676, which is a little bit closer to alpha 1 we defined, and alpha 2 equals to minus 0 0.2. 297, which is also very close to alpha 2 we defined. And the last autoregressive example where order of integration equals to 3. Alpha 1 and alpha 2 remain the same as in previous example, and alpha 3 equals to minus 0 0.333. Look at the chart. Chart looks similarly to the previous case, and autoregressive model output is also very close to the reality. Three alphas, so third order of integration, alpha 1 very close to the alpha we defined, alpha 2 also very close, and alpha 3 minus 0 0.1.130, which is also close to the alpha 3 we defined. As you see, autoregressive model easily helps to define orders of integration, alpha values, and model time series. But can it nicely work on the real price chart? This is Bitcoin price chart starting from January 2017 when Bitcoin was about 1000, then Bitcoin price surged to 20k and dumped to about 6,000. Here is the output of autoregressive model. As you see, Bitcoin time series is integrated of order 18. When you see such big order of integration, you have to suspect that something is wrong with your model. You can confirm this with residual's correlogram. Residual is a difference between real value and value forecasted by model. If you see significant correlation on certain legs, that means you need to apply different model. That means we cannot approximate Bitcoin price chart with autoregressive model. But if you experiment with different time frames and time ranges, you can find certain ranges where autoregressive model works well. And a price chart can be integrated of order 2 or even order 1. And if it is integrated of order 1, that means that Bitcoin returns are stationary. This so-called instability happens due to trend or volatility changes. Now let's define linear combination. Assume that we have several time series, x1, x2, and so on. Their linear combination will be time series y, which equals some coefficient b1 multiplied by values of time series x1 plus b2 multiplied by x2 values and so on till bn multiplied by xn values. If this set of time series is integrated of order 1 and their linear combination y is integrated of order 0, that means that x1, x2 and till xn are co-integrated time series. Let's look at the example. We'll generate two time series, x1 and x2. Both of them are integrated of order 1, where alpha 1 for x1 equals to 0 0.366 and for x2 equals to minus 0 0.333. Look at x1 and x2 charts. As you see, both time series move together. Somewhere they diverge, but return to the mean. In order to confirm that x1 and x2 are co-integrated, We'll use cointegration test from Stats Model Library. Its output is very similar to ADF test output. We see test statistics, p value, and critical values at 1, 5, and 10%. As you remember from the previous video, our significance level is 5%. So we need to compare test value minus 5.5 approximately. With critical value as 5%, at 5%, minus 3.3 .3 if test value is less than critical value, and p value is less than 5%, 
we can confirm that x1 and x2 are cointegrated time series. The key takeaway from cointegration between x1 and x2 is the stationarity of their linear combination, or in other words, spread. That means we can apply simple statistical methods to this linear combination and make profitable trades. But there are several risks when you use cointegration in statistical arbitrage. The first one, real prices are not always cointegrated. So you need to continuously run this test, and once pairs are no longer cointegrated, you have to stop trading them. And another one. Since our significance level is 5%, we have to expect 5% of false test results. That's all for today. In the next video we'll learn how to build this linear combination of cointegrated time series. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want more videos, and leave your questions in the comment section below. Bye!